Hello everyone. So today we are going to start with the another chapter in first PUC biology that is photosynthesis in higher plants. Okay. So we are going to discuss with the CET questions on the chapter called as photosynthesis in higher plants. So what we are going to discuss in this chapter, let's we have to know about the synopsis, right? So that's why what is photosynthesis? We are starting to Synapses with the definition of the photosynthesis. That is, photosynthesis is an enzyme regulated anabolic process, isn't it? So, metabolic reactions are classified into two types that is, anabolic reactions and catabolic reactions. Anabolism means what? Formation of a complex organic material from the combination of a simple molecule, such as carbon dioxide and water, combines with each other and forms a complex organic material that is nothing but the glue. So such a type of reaction of a metabolic reaction is said to be what? Anabolic reaction and the process is said to be anabolism. Whereas the breaking down of complex organic material to form a simple compound such as carbon dioxide, right? Isn't it? So such process is called as what? Catabolic reactions and the process is said to be catabolic. Okay, photosynthesis is an anabolic process means formation of a complex organic material. Okay, so it's a chemical process which utilizes light energy to produce or synthesize organic compounds in the form of sugar. So what's the main importance of photosynthesis here? That is, which is acting as a primary source of food. Isn't it? Photosynthesis. Without photosynthesis, no plants will develop and without no produces, no other organisms or living animals will exist on earth because plants are acting as a chief producers, isn't it? So vegetarian or non-vegetarian, both directly and indirectly, we are depending upon the plants for the food. That's why photosynthesis is the primary source of food, okay? And it also involves in a major process that is release of oxygen to the atmosphere. It absorbs the carbon dioxide and releases oxygen, which is very much essential for the life process. Even though there is no food also, we can able to survive for some times, for some days, but without oxygen, we can't able to spend a minute or so, isn't it? So that's why photosynthesis process is very important reactions. Which type of reaction? The two anabolic reactions. Isn't it? So, which is taking place inside the plants. So, we are going to discuss about the photosynthesis, how the process of photosynthesis takes place in the higher plants. Okay. So, this about a short introduction. And in this chapter, we have, okay, so the early experiments which has been proved the requirements of photosynthesis for the plants. Okay, so varieties of scientists have conducted many series of experiments. So in this, they have proved the process of photosynthesis and the requirement of photosynthesis and the byproduct of photosynthesis. Okay, so many scientists among them, the one who was very popular is the Joseph Priestley. Okay, he has done the bell jar experiment, candle and mouse experiment. Here is the experiment set up. Okay, so in this, he put a burning candle and he introduced the mouse inside that and the entire mouse and burning candle was covered with the bell jar made up of a glass. Okay, so after some time, what he observed is the mind died and the burning of candle is also burned. Start off. Why this has been happened? Because the oxygen found inside the bell jar is shared between the respiration of mouse as well as the combustion of cat. Okay. 
Okay, both the process require oxygen. As soon as the oxygen is completed here, as soon as the oxygen is completed here, so this mice died due to the divide of oxygen and the candle is also switched off. Okay, turned off. So after some time, again, he introduced the mint plant to the same setup. He switched on the candle and introduced the mice and to that same setup itself, he introduced the mint plant. Okay, so and he observed for the changes what are occurring in the bench. He observed that for a few hours, the candle was really burning itself and the mice was also alive. How come it is possible? Isn't it? So the doubt arises that the mean plant involving in a process called as photosynthesis, which re releases oxygen. Okay, so this oxygen is utilized by the burning of candle for combustion and mines for respiration. So this is a one well jar experiment conducted by the Joseph Priestley. Very important question for five marks, isn't it? So many questions came may come on this concept also. Okay, like this, varieties of scientists have worked to prove one or the other thing regarding the photosynthesis, like Jan Indian house, isn't it? So he shows burning candle and breaking of animals purifies the air. So sunlight is essential for plant processes, isn't it? See here, liberation of oxygen indicates the photosynthesis process. Okay, so like this, he also proved the important thing necessary for the photosynthesis, especially oxygen is liberated during photosynthesis. That is the main thing what he has discovered. Okay, next. We'll brief all the things. Julius Van Sachs proved that plant glucose is produced by the plant during photosynthesis and it is stored in the form of a starch. Okay, next. These are the extra information what you can read here. T.W. Angelman. Okay, Angelman proved that aerobic bacteria you use to detect the site of oxygen evolution and he proved that oxygen is evolved during photosynthesis. So which is the one which is involved in photosynthesis here? There is a green algae that is cladophora. Okay, so the entire setup he introduced the aerobic bacteria which require oxygen. So aerobic bacteria will go and present in the area where oxygen is released. Okay, so this clearly proves that oxygen is released during photosynthesis. So next, he observed that bacteria accumulated mainly in the blue and red light of split spectrum. So then he proves that oxygen is released during photosynthesis. Okay, next. So key feature of photosynthesis was first explained in 19th century. And the plant could use light energy to make carbohydrates from water. So this is the carbon dioxide. It combines with water. In the presence of light, it may be get converted into carbohydrates. But the complete equation was incomplete. Yeah, isn't it? CH2O represented as a carbohydrate. So next, another scientist called as Cornelius Van Nee. He also performed an experiment on purple and green bacteria, isn't it? And demonstrated photosynthesis is a light-dependent process. Photosynthesis is a light-dependent process. And he also proved that hydrogen, which from H2O reduces carbon dioxide to carbohydrates. And he also proves that oxygen comes from H2O, not from carbon dioxide. The oxygen present with the carbon dioxide is utilized in the formation of glucose, but evolving oxygen will come from water, not from carbon dioxide. This is the one main thing what is proved by the scientist called as Cornelius Van Nee. Okay, and concluded with the final equation that is sub CO2 plus 12 H2O3 in the presence of a sunlight inside the mesophyll cells get converted into glucose, which also liberates six molecules of water and six molecules of oxygen. This overall final equation for the photosynthesis. 
So this is how different scientists have worked on the process called as photosynthesis and proved sunlight is required for photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is required for photosynthesis, oxygen is evolved during photosynthesis. Okay. So next, this is about the introduction, early experiments which has been done to prove the process as well as the products required for photosynthesis and byproducts released after photosynthesis. Yeah. Next. So when the photosynthesis takes place, that's the main thing what we have to know now, isn't it? So where the photosynthesis usually takes place. Usually, we know the photosynthesis takes place in leaves. Hence, leaves are said to be what? Kitchen of the plants, isn't it? Okay. Photosynthesis mainly takes place in green parts of the plants, especially in leaves. In that, where inside the mesophyll cells. Okay. The mesophyll cells of the leaves consist of a structure called as chloroplast. Inside this, photosynthesis takes place. These are the sites for photosynthesis. Okay, the thylakoids and chloroplast contains most of the pigment required for capturing the light energy, which is required for photosynthesis. Okay, so we will go for the structure now. So this is the structure of a chloroplast, which consists of two membrane, one is outer membrane and inner membrane. The chloroplast covered with the two membrane, which is made up of outer and inner membrane. Inside the membrane, our membrane, we can see the presence of a fluid matrix called as what? Stroma. Okay. So this stroma consisting of grana, which are piled like one above the other, like a pile of coins. Each structure is called as grana, and a pile of coin-like structure is said to be what? Grana. Many grana are interconnected with each other, formation of a stroma lamp. Okay, each grana of a chloroplast are interconnected with each other by the formation of a structure called a stroma lamp. Next, we can also see the presence of a lipids, starch, which is synthesized during photosynthesis, ribosomes. Okay. Next, this fluid matrix called as stroma. So this is the structure of the chloroplast, which mainly involves in a process called as photosynthesis. Okay, next, what is there in this chapter? Main thing, what we have to know in this is pigments involved in photosynthesis. Okay, the main pigments which involves in photosynthesis are classified into varieties of types, which is the major pigment, chlorophyll A, that is, which is having bright or blue green in chromatography. If we split the white light in a chromatography, it appears in a big gray art structure. Here, its absorption capacity is in the bright blue green region. Okay, inside the chromatograph. Next, which is a major pigment, which is acting as a reaction center involving in maximum absorption of that. Okay, and converting light into chemical energy, light energy into chemical energy. Next, another major pigment is the chlorophyll B, which is having the absorption capacity of yellow green color range in the chromatograph. Okay, next, one more pigment that is xanthophyll, which is yellow in color, carotenoid, yellow to yellow orange in color. That's why the name carrot has got the name as a carrot because it consists of an orange pigment called as carotenoids. That's why the name carrot. Okay. In the blue and red region of spectrum shows higher rate of photosynthesis. So which is showing higher rate of photosynthesis? Blue and red regions of the spectrum shows higher rate of photosynthesis. Okay. Among them, these are the major pigments. First is the chlorophyll A and the next is the chlorophyll B. Apart from this, all these will act as an accessory pigment. Okay, this will majorly form as an antenna, which is a main reaction center, absorbs maximum amount of energy. Yes. This one, chlorophyll B, xanthophyll and carotenoids will also absorb certain amount of light energy and transfer it to the chlorophyll A, which is the reaction so this is what the pigments involved in photosynthesis. Okay. So next, photosynthesis mainly takes place in two steps. That is light reaction and 
dark reaction. So what is this light reaction? The reaction which takes place in the presence of light, okay, which mainly traps the light energy, traps the light energy and get converted into an energy rich compound. This utilizes the light energy and produces or synthesizes the energy rich compounds such as ATP and NADPH. Okay, these are the energy rich compounds. So that's why. It is the first phase of photosynthesis. Light reaction is the first phase of photosynthesis. It's also called as photochemical phase. Why? Because it takes place in the presence of light. And it synthesizes the energy rich compound. And in next, it synthesizes the carbohydrates in the form of sugar. That's why it is called as what? Photochemical phase. And the major things, steps involved in light reaction are absorption of light, splitting of water in order to release the oxygen, evolution of oxygen and formation of high energy compounds like ATP and NADPH. These are the major steps which is taking place during light reaction which is the first phase of photosynthesis. Okay, next it involves several pigments. All the pigments what we have discussed pigments involved in photosynthesis will form an association and all together they will call it as what? Light harvesting complexes, so-called LHC. Where we can find this? Inside the grana, the membrane is called as thylakoid. These thylakoids have this light harvesting complexes or photosystem unit, which in turn have a structure called as quantosomes. Okay, quantosomes possess this light harvesting complex and photosynthetic units which traps the light energy and get converted into a energy rich compounds. Okay, so the light harvesting complexes are of two types that is photosystem one and photosystem two. So this is named according to their discovery. This photosystem was first named identified that's why it's got the name as photosystem one and it has the absorption capacity of 700 nanometer wavelength of light. Whereas photosystem 2, it was discovered later after the discovery of photosystem 1 and it has the absorption capacity of 680 nanometer wavelength of light. Okay, so altogether light harvesting complexes made up of hundreds of pigments molecules which are bound with the, within the protein structure which includes photosystem 1 and here is the diagram of this. So this is the primary action acceptor, electron acceptor and this is the reaction center which is acting as a reaction center chlorophyll A. Okay. Apart from that, all the other pigments are also combined to form a complex. This pigment molecules such as xanthophyll, carotenoids, chlorophyll B, all phycocyanin, phycoerythrin like this, all the pigments are also involved in this accessory pigments and main reaction center is the chlorophyll. Altogether, it forms the LHC, that is light harvesting complex. As soon as light falls on this, this pigment molecule gets excited and releases the electron to the reaction center. This being a major pigment, it also gets excited and releases electron and also collect the electrons released from the pigment molecules and become excited and transfer the electrons to the primary acid. Okay, so this is structure of a light harvesting complex that is nothing but photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Clear? Next. So this we have discussed. Main for chlorophyll A is the reaction center. Chlorophyll photosystem 1 has chlorophyll A absorption capacity 700 nanometer. Photosystem 2 has chlorophyll A absorption capacity 680 nanometer. Next, so the process of photosynthesis includes two phases that is, photochemical phase light reaction and biosynthetic phase dark reaction. Okay, major thing appears in light reaction is light absorption, splitting of water, oxygen release, and formation of ATP. Dark reaction it is an independent phase which is not directly depending on the presence of light but it's depending upon the products released during the light reaction, isn't it? Okay, next, it majorly involves in the food synthesis in the form of sugar. Okay, next. 
so the process of formation of atp molecules is called as what phosphorylation the formation of high energy compounds is atp and nadh is called as phosphorylation if this atp synthesis takes place in the presence of light then it is called as what photophosphorylation okay so what is photophosphorylation as the synthesis of atp or from adp and inorganic phosphate in the presence of light in the presence of light hence it is said to be what phosphorylation and in the presence of light it is called as what photophosphorylation okay so the photophosphorylation takes place in two steps which is a major part of light reaction okay so formation of atp high energy compounds release of oxygen absorption of what light is a major thing and synthesis of high energy compounds are the major part of the light reaction okay which takes place in two steps that is cyclic photophosphorylation non cyclic photophosphorylation what is the cyclic and non cyclic then if the photophosphorylation takes place in the cyclic movement of electrons between the photo system then it is said to be cyclic photophosphorylation if it is a when it is called as non cyclic photophosphorylation the, here there is no cycling of the electrons or moving of electrons takes place in cyclic fashion because the once the electrons are moved from the photosystem to it will not cycle back to same photosystem hence it is said to be non cyclic photophosphorylation okay so this is a very important question so concept non cyclic photophosphorylation includes both the photosystem photosystem 2 and photosystem isn't it so next where it will takes place it takes place in the sugrana hence the process is carried okay next so what is cyclic photophosphorylation here we are observing only the functional ps1 only will be the functional photosynthesis okay it happens in stroma lab where this type of photophosphorylation takes place in stroma lab Where PS two and NADP reductase enzymes are acts. Okay, so next, hence only ATP molecules are synthesized here. ATP and NADPH molecules are synthesized. Uh, the difference between cyclic photophosphorylation and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Diagrammatic representation of non-cyclic photophosphorylation where. Photosystem two is functional why? Because it has the absorption capacity of six eighty nanometer. First, light will come as a six eighty, then seven hundred. That's why this will become functional at six eighty nanometer wavelength itself. That's why photosystem two is functioning. So this get excited when light falls on it and transfer the electrons to the primary axis. this primary acceptor again transfer the electrons to the electron transport system while transferring the electron it utilizes adp plus inorganic phosphate and produces atp molecule then the electron transport system transfer the electrons to the lhc of photosystem one meanwhile the light also falls of which nanometer 700 nanometer on the lhc of photosystem 1 so as a result of this the lhc become excited pigment molecules will become excited and transfer the electrons to the primary electron acceptor of photosystem okay then it will move to the next lhc of again second photosystem it will not cycle back here hence the name non cyclic photophosphorylation So while transferring a molecule of NADPH is also produced. So this is how energy rich compounds are formed in the light reaction. Light absorption takes place. Formation of energy rich compound in order to compensate the loss of the 
LHC of photosis one two, which has transferred the electrons to the electron acceptor. Splitting of water takes place. Okay, one molecule of water split to release two molecule of electrons, two molecule of proton, and one molecule of nascent oxygen. Here, two molecules of water result in the formation of one molecule of oxygen molecule. Splitting of two water molecules result in the formation of one molecule of oxygen. These electrons are transferred into the LHC to compensate the loss takes place during the transferring of the electrons. Formation of ATP and NADP. Okay, so this is about the non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Whereas in cyclic photophosphorylation, this only one photosystem one will be functional. First, the light having the 700 capacity falls on this LHC and it becomes excited, transfer the electrons to the primary electron acceptor. This transfer this electrons to the electron transport system where ATP molecules are generated. No NADH because they lack an enzyme called as NADPH synthase. So that's why. So Cyclic photophosphorylation in the cyclic movement of electron from LHC to electron acceptor, electron acceptor to the electron transport system, and electron transport system to LHC. Like this, cyclic movement of electron takes place, hence the name cyclic photophosphorylation. So, this is the light reaction what is taking place in the photosynthesis. So, next is the dark reaction. Before going to dark reaction, the splitting of water is very much important. This, that's why they have again, and the scientific name is called as what photolysis. Breaking of water molecules in the presence of light is called as what photolysis. That is nothing but splitting of water. Okay, so splitting of water result in the formation of protons, electrons, and oxygen molecules. Okay, but the electrons. On splitting of water takes place in the presence of magnesium ions. This is very much important. Okay, this may come in the neat versions. Okay, in the presence of magnesium and chlorine ions, light will split the water molecule into H plus and O nascent oxygen. Okay, so next. Another major important concept of photosynthesis is chemiosmotic hypothesis. Okay, this clearly explains this hypothesis how the ATP molecules are synthesized. In the thylakoid membrane. Okay, so how the ATP synthesis takes place in the thylakoid membrane, and it majorly depending upon the proton gradient. ATP synthesis is majorly depending on what development of proton gradient across the membrane of the thylakoid. So how this will take place? Here is the three reasons, which are those: proton accumulation takes place towards inside the membrane in the lumen. How come? Because of the splitting of water molecules takes place inside the lumen, hence the proton are produced by the splitting of water makes the increase in the proton concentration inside the lumen of the thylakoids. Okay, as electron moves through the photosystem, protons are also transported across the membrane from the matrix. Or stroma, the electrons which is transferring from electron acceptor will also carry the protons. Okay, so we will explain this in detail with the diagram. Here, this is a non-cyclic photophosphorylation in this photosystem to electron transport system, which have cytochromes B and F and photosystem. Then electrons which are excited and transferring from LHC of photosystem to will bring along with the electrons will also bring the proton inside the lumen of the thylakoids. This is the first reason. So the concentration of H plus ions will become more in the lumen of the thylakoid. Next, splitting of water also takes place in the lumen. This also increases the H plus ions. Whereas the NADP utilizes H plus ion present in the matrix and get converted as NADP. All these three reasons makes the concentration of proton is in more in case of inside the lumen and less in the stroma. As a result, the proton gradient is formed, which move 
or transfer the protons from higher concentration to lower concentration. So this, since they can't able to move as it is from outside, inside to outside, they require a protein channel, which are acting as a protein channel here, transmembrane proteins. So which protein is acting as a channel here? That is the enzyme or a protein called as ATP synthase. Okay. By transferring the H plus ion through this ATP synthase, this ATP synthase has two parts, that is F0 and F1 part. This H plus ions while transferring from F0 to F1, it changes the structural configuration of the enzyme and this changed structural configuration produces ATP molecules by utilizing ATP plus an organic plus. So this is how ATP synthesis and NADPH synthesis takes place during the light reaction which is detailedly explained by a concept called as chemiosmotic hypothesis. Clear? Oh, next. How ATP and NADH is used? Where this will be used? So this, these are the products of light reaction, which are one, ATP, NADPH, oxygen, which are the products of light reaction. Of oxygen diffuses out of the chloroplast for the you know, external environment. Okay, then as the ATP and NADPH are used in the biosynthetic phase, that is the second part of photosynthesis, which is nothing but it is also called as what dark reaction, isn't it? Okay, though the, this process does not directly depend upon dark light, light, but it is depending upon the product of light reaction, isn't it? It is not directly depending upon light. It is indirectly depending upon the products released during the light reaction. Hence, it is also depending upon light, isn't it? So, Melvin Kelvin, a scientist called as Melvin Kelvin, after the Second World War, working with the radioactive carbon during algal photosynthesis, he discovered that the first carbon product. So, which is formed after absorbing the atmospheric carbon dioxide is the three carbon containing compound that is nothing but three phosphoglycerin acid. Okay, so he discovered the how the carbon dioxide is reduced by the external products. Okay, by utilizing ATP and NADPH in order to synthesize the sugar. Hence, this cycle is also called as what Kelvin cycle. So, so explain the complete biosynthetic pathway, how the sugars have been synthesized, which is the first stable compound former and which is a series of next uh, intermediate compound former during the entire process is explained in a cycle called as Kelvin cycle is. Okay, next. So, further work of scientists led to the discovery of another set of plants. Usually, majority of the plants are producing C3 compound, which is that nothing but phosphoglycerate acid as the first stable compound. But in some of the plants, they also observed the first stable compound as an oxaloacetic acid, which is 4 carbon containing compound. Okay. So, hence, the plants which is having C3 acid, which is producing three C3 acid as a first stable compound. Such a plants, the cyclic movement and synthesis of sugar biosynthetic pathway is said to be C3 pathway. Whereas in such plants, those who are producing C4 acid as the first stable compound, then such a type of biosynthetic pathway is called as what? C4 pathway. So, dark reaction is studied under two courses that is C3 pathway and C4 pathway, depending upon what? Depending upon the first stable compound or the first compound which absorbs the atmospheric carbon dioxide and gets converted into a stable. Depending on, the, on this, the biosynthetic pathway are of many types, two types C3 pathway, C4 pathway. Isn't it? So, the Process of photosynthesis starts when carbon dioxide is accepted by primary acid. Okay, so which is the compound which is accepting the carbon dioxide and getting converted as whether a C3 acid or a C4 acid? That is important. So, which is the one that is ribulose bisphosphate? 
or your DP. Ribulose bisphosphate is acting as a primary acceptor molecule of a carbon dioxide. This compound accepts the carbon dioxide and gets converted into a C3 acid in C3 plants, C4 acid in C4 plants. Okay, so which is a 5 carbon keto sugar. Ketose, sugar, and the major enzyme which involves in this is the ribulose bisphosphate oxygenase or carboxylase. Oxygenase or carboxylase. That's why the enzyme name is said to be what? Rubisco. Rubisco means what? Ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase or oxygen. Means it has a dual property which have the capacity to fix the carbon dioxide as well as to fix with the oxygen. Okay. So, the next C3 pathway includes three steps. There is carboxylation, reduction, regeneration. C3 pathway includes or Kelvin cycle includes three steps. Very first step is the carboxylation. That is ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate absorbs atmospheric carbon dioxide in the presence of water molecule under a process called as carboxylation in the presence of an enzyme that is rubis, ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase and getting con gets converted into a 3-phosphoglycerate. There is nothing but 3-phosphoglycerate acid which is a first stable compound. Hence this pathway is said to be what? C3 path. Okay. So this undergoes second reaction, that is reduction reaction and get converted into a triose phosphate. So during this, ATP molecules are utilized and ADP and NADP molecules are released. Here, the product of light reaction are utilized in the dark reaction. Okay, next, this triose pathway undergo a series of intermediate reaction and finally get converted into a sucrose, which is stored in the form of a steam patch. Next, this triose phosphate has to be regenerated to cycle back the ribulose one from a pipe with phosphate. For that purpose, it undergo next reaction called as regeneration. Okay, so undergo regeneration reaction and get converted as a ribulose one from a pipe with phosphate in order to complete the cycle. Here also, ATP molecules are getting used. Clear? So, this is the Kelvin cycle for C3 pathway. Next, one more pathway is there, that is C4 pathway. Where we are going to observe this in a dry tropical region plants. The plants which are going in dry tropical region exhibit this C4 pathway. What is the difference here from C3 to C4? The first carbon compound, stable compound formula is an four carbon compound called as oxaloacetic acid. Which one? Oxaloacetic acid. Okay. So the plants with C4 pathway does follow Kelvin cycle as a major biosynthetic pathway. Even though it is exhibiting C4 pathway, they also follow Kelvin cycle for the synthesis of sugar. Okay. Sugar will be synthesized finally from the Kelvin pathways. Okay, so how come the C4 plants are different from C3? Because they have a special type of leaf anatomy. Okay, that anatomy is said to be what? Crans anatomy. Crans anatomy. The meaning of crans means breath. Okay, so these type of cells which are having thick vascular tissues, the covering of our cells with a special type of cells. Okay, called as bundle sheet cells and the arrangement of these bundle sheet cells over a leaf mesophyll cells is called as crans anatomy. These bundle sheet cells having thick vascular bundle, thick cell wall and have a resistance to tolerate high temperature, response for high light density, intensities. They also lack a process called as photorespiration. Okay, they also lack a process called as photo respiration and have a greater productivity of bio leaves. So this is what the difference we have between C4 plants to C3 plants. Okay, so next, this one, bundle sheet cells and plants. Okay, 
So the pathway followed by C4 plants are called as hatch and slag pathway because the scientists who discovered this pathway are hatch and Hence, the pathway is also called uh, by their name itself. It is hatch and slag pathway. C4 pathway is also called as what? Hatch and slag pathway. And this is the bundle sheet cell and this is the mesophyll cells. See here, the mesophyll cells of the C4 plants lack the enzyme called as rubisco. Okay. Hence, the atmospheric carbon dioxide are absorbed in the form of bicarbonate ions with a structure called as phosphoenol, compound called as phosphoenol pyruvate and get converted into a C4 acid that is nothing but oxaloacetic acid. Okay, so this oxaloacetic acid next converted into malic acid, aspartic acid which is transferred through the pores called as plasmodesmata into the bundle sheet. Here, mesophyll cells have pep carboxylase enzyme, which involves in the conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate, which absorbs atmospheric carbon dioxide that is in the form of bicarbonate ions and get converted into oxaloacetic acid. They lack rubisco enzyme, but they have pep carboxylase enzyme. Here, they have rubisco enzyme, but they lack pep carboxylase. Hence, the C4 acid will be transferred to the bundle sheet cells. Okay. So, this C4 acid undergo a process called as decarboxylation, that is removal of carbon dioxide and get converted into C3 acid. This C3 acid again transported back to the mesophyll cell and regenerate to regenerate the phosphoenol. Whereas this released carbon dioxide will undergo Kelvin cycle or follow Kelvin cycle to synthesize the sugar. So this is what the difference between C3 pathway and C4 pathway. Okay, here both the cells are involving here mesophyll cells along with the bundle sheet cells. Why? Because mesophyll cells lack rubisco enzyme and contains pep -case, that is phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase enzyme. Yeah, so this is the diagrammatic representation of C4 pathway as well as H and slag So next, the last concept of the chapter is factors affecting photosynthesis. Okay, so both the factors, external factors and internal factors affect the photosynthesis. That is, Availability of sunlight, temperature, carbon dioxide concentration, water, internal factors which affect the photosynthesis is stress regarding the water, cells, cells availability of water, okay, uh, and arrangement of the leaves, shape of the leaves, cells which are majorly involving in photosynthesis and the amount of chloroplast. All these are the internal factors which affect the rate of photosynthesis. Okay, if a chemical process, which may be any chemical process, is affected by more than one factor, if more than one factor affecting the same chemical process, then its rate will be defined by determined by the nearest the factor which is nearest to its minimal value. Okay, so which one is the factor which is most minimally affecting the rate of any chemical process? then that factor is directly affect the process. Okay, so this is the law and it is called as what Blackman law of limiting factor, which was proposed in the year 1905. Scientists called as Blackman. Okay, so according to this law, if any process is affected by more than one factor, then rate will be determined by the factor which is nearest to its minimum, Okay, so like this, which are the factors which may affect the rate of photosynthesis, especially like external factor, that is light. Okay, so low intensity of light, linear relationship between incident light and carbon dioxide fixation. Okay, so if even though the height of intensity of light is much also, the rate does not show for the increase. Because the other factor may become limiting. It may damage the chloroplast. High intensified light may damage the chloroplast, mesophyll cells. Like other factors will become limiting. Okay, next, carbon dioxide concentration, that is 
fiber dioxide concentration, very low concentration is this is 0.03% to 0. Up to 0.05% of concentration increase is necessary for the carbon dioxide fixation. Okay. So an increase behind this level can be damaging over longer. More amount of carbon dioxide is there also problem for that. Okay. Next, temperature, isn't it? Dark reactions are controlled by temperature because they are enzyme. Major enzymes are involved in this. Okay, next. C3 plants have higher temperature optimum than C3 plants because they have a special type of cells called as bundle sheet cells which have the resistance to high temperature. Next, water may also act as a what limiting factor? Okay, so this is the very lowest limiting factor. Where this can act as a limiting factor at the area where there is a very less water or very scarcity of water. Okay, so effect of water. What's the main effect of water? Water stress result in closing of stomata and reduces the availability of carbon dioxide. It also leads to bridging of leaves, means curling of reduce surface area and reduce metabolic activity in the leaves. So this is the enthralled detail information regarding the chapter called as photosynthesis in higher plants. So let's discuss some of the questions regarding this chapter. Okay. So the rate of photosynthesis is controlled by, okay. So which is controlling the rate of photosynthesis? The option given are the rate of light reaction, rate of dark reaction, rate of both light and dark reaction, none of the effect. Okay. So, we know that correct option is rate of dark reaction because light reaction involves in the formation of energy rich compounds. But photosynthesis major product is the synthesis of sugar which is mainly takes place in dark reaction. Hence, the rate of dark reaction is determining the rate of photosynthesis. Isn't it? So, that's why the correct option for this question is option B. Okay. Next, the primary carbon dioxide acceptor in C4 cycle is malic acid, phosphoenol pyruvate, rubisco, aspartic acid. We know, now only we have discussed that phosphoenol pyruvate inside the mesophyll cells of the C4 plants absorb carbon dioxide in the form of bicarbonate ions, isn't it? And get converted into an oxaloacetic acid in the presence of an enzyme. Which one? Phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase. Okay, so that's why which is the correct option for this question? Phosphoenol pyruvate, that is option B. Yeah, next. Manganese is required in which? Now, this also we have discussed, right? Chlorophyll synthesis, nucleic acid synthesis, plant cell wall formation, photolysis of water during photosynthesis. During photosynthesis of water, the light involves in splitting of water molecules in order to release two molecules of hydrogen with one molecule of nascent oxygen. That time, it requires manganese and chlorine ions, isn't it? So that's why, which is the correct option for this question? Photolysis of water during photosynthesis requires manganese. Okay, option D is the correct right answer for question number three. Clear? Yeah. Next, which of the following is not a necessary thing? Carotene, chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, chloroxanthophyll. We have discussed this also, right? So, among the pigments, all the pigments, chlorophyll A is the major reaction center. Is acting as a major pigment which absorbs maximum amount of energy and this is acting as a reaction center. Isn't it? So that's why chlorophyll A will become the reaction center. The remaining three will come from the accessory pigment molecules. So correct option is chlorophyll A is not an accessory pigment. It is a major reaction pigment. Clear? Oh. Next. In actively growing young plants, the best data for estimating the rate of photosynthesis would be, okay, in actively growing young plants, 
the best data what we can collect for estimating the rate of photosynthesis would be ratio of oxygen evolved to carbon dioxide absorbed increase in fresh weight increase in dry weight increase in carbon dioxide okay of course increase in fresh weight dry weight all this will result to the growth concept not with the photosynthesis concept right but increase in carbohydrate concentration also we can take but apart from that the ratio of oxygen evolved during the carbon dioxide absorbed is the most suitable data what we can estimate to take the rate of photosynthesis okay so for that one which is the correct option here option a rate of oxygen evolved to carbon dioxide absorbed is the right answer for question number 5 clear next question number 6 discovery of emerson effect has already shown the following things two distinct photochemical reaction light and dark reaction of photosynthesis photophosphorylation photorespiration so this emerson effect shows when higher wavelength of light is simultaneously supplied with shorter wave okay higher wavelength is 700 nanometer shorter wavelength is 680 500 480 like this then rate of photosynthesis is increased so the discovery of emerson effect shows the existence of two distinct reaction center and photochemical reactions that is photosystem 1 and okay so emerson effect is an effect which showed the existence of two distinct reactions during the photosynthesis which have the absorption capacity of both shorter wavelength light and higher wavelength of light so that's why which is the correct option here two distinct photochemical reactions clear oh next question which one of the following statement is true for ap so atp is a prosthetic part of an enzyme atp is an enzyme atp is organic ions of enzyme atp is a coenzyme so among the four option which is the correct one here atp is a coenzyme okay why because it's also known as molecular unit of currency is a coenzyme of most importance in transfer of chemical energy derived from biochemical oxidation and it also transport energy within the cells for metabolism it is a coenzyme not a prosthetic part of an enzyme it is not a complete enzyme it is not an organic ion substrate it is a coenzyme okay so that's why which is the correct option option t atp is a coenzyme which is some of the questions which is apart from the syllabus okay next Which of the following process occurs in bundle sheet cell? Regeneration, fixation, carboxylation, decarboxylation. Now only we have discussed, right? The answer is decarboxylation. Why? Because the C4 acid get converted to C3 acid by a process called a C decarboxylation reaction. Okay. Next answer is option D, decarboxylation. Which of the following statement are true regarding photosystem? Photosystems are arrangement of chlorophyll and other pigments packed into thylakoids. Many prokaryotes have only one photosystem. Option C, both A and B are correct. Only A is correct. Which of the following statement are true regarding photosystem? That we have to know first, right? Photosystems are arrangement of chlorophyll and other pigments packed into thylakoids right this is the correct statement many prokaryotes have only one photosystem of course this is also right so that's why which is the correct option both a and b are correct okay so like this if we know the concepts very clearly then we can easily select the option which is the correct option both a and b are correct okay yeah? next in bacteria Name the color of light which is responsible for photosynthesis. So we have spectrum analysis and chromatography, which comes with ultraviolet rays, blue, red, none of the. So the correct answer for this is the C, red. Okay. Usually bacteria have a chlorophyll called as bacteriochlorophyll pigments, which have the capacity of absorption of more infrared rays. 
okay infrared rays so this will come on the color spectrum analysis that is in the red range so that's why which is the correct option red c you see correct answer for question number 5 because bacteria have the chlorophyll pigment called as bacterio chlorophyll which have the absorption capacity of infrared red than the ultraviolet rays so that's why it comes under red spectrum in photo from paper chromatography or chromatographic techniques okay next photosynthesis is an oxidation reduction process the materials that is oxidized is so which is the, among them is undergoing oxidation process okay so carbon dioxide nadp nicotinamide diphosphate h2o water phosphoglycerin as the correct option is h2o why this is the reason within the plant cell the water is oxidized means it loses electrons okay while carbon dioxide is reduced it gains electron carbon dioxide gains electrons and becomes reduced whereas water loses its electrons and becomes oxidized okay so this transform the water into oxygen and carbon dioxide into glucose that's why which is the thing which is involving in a uh reduction process that is what water excuse me oh. next question photosynthetically active radiation that is par represent which of the following range of okay. see we have discussed about different pigments isn't it which are the different pigments chlorophyll a chlorophyll b carotenoids mesenchymes among them they have the absorption capacity of different different nanometer of pigment all together it will come under a spectrum of wavelength absorption that is that is from 400 to 700 and this wavelength of light is called as what par that is photosynthetically active region the region of spectrum which involves in a process called as photosynthesis that's why photosynthetically active region that is par it is called as par so which is the correct option here 400 to 7 there should be minimum 400 and maximum 7 so among that Which one is the correct option? Option B, that is four hundred to seven hundred nanometer. Yeah. Next question number thirteen. Algae and other submerged plants bound in water during daytime and sink at night because why? They come up to enjoy some time. They lose weight at night. They become buoyant due to accumulation of oxygen as a result of photosynthesis. They become light due to food material. when food get accumulated it will not become light so that is not the correct option they lose weight at night so it's also correct option not the suitable one because they not exhibit one weight at night one weight at day like that okay this is totally a wrong statement because they will not come for the enjoy the correct option is what they become buoyant due to the accumulation of oxygen right because during photosynthesis it releases oxygen oxygen is released during photosynthesis as a result they become buoyant buoyant in the tail so that's why which is the correct option option c is the right answer for question number 12 okay next which one occurs both during cyclic and non cyclic mode of photophosphorylation involvement of ps1 and Yes, no. Formation of ATP, release of oxygen, formation of NADPH. So, among the both, we can't able to expect the involvement of both PS1 and PS2 in the cyclic and non. Because in cyclic only PS1 is function, isn't it? Formation of ATP, of course, takes place in cyclic and non. Release of oxygen takes place in non cyclic because it takes place near photosystem two. Okay. formation of nadph also takes place in non cyclic because ps1 lacks the enzyme called as nadph reductase 
So that's why which is the suitable one occur both in cyclic and non-cyclic is formation of ATP molecules. Okay. Yeah? Oh, next, the correct sequence of flow of electrons in the light reaction is during the light reaction, which how the electron will flow. PS2, plastoquinone, cytochromes, PS1, peridoxin. See, during light reaction, the correct flow of electrons in the light reaction, isn't it? So, this is what non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Very first, PS2 will become active and it transfer the electrons to a electron acceptor called as plastoquinone, which is a plasto electron acceptor found in the photosystem 1, 2, that is plastoquinone. And then to electron transport system, that is having cytochrome B and F. Okay, and this transfer the electrons to PS1. This again transfer the electrons to electron acceptor, which is acting as electron acceptor in PS1, that is peridox. Okay, so this is the correct statement. That is A, plus photosystem 2, transfer it to plastoquinone, plastoquinone transfer to cytochrome, cytochrome transfer again to PS1, and PS1 transfer the electrons to peridox. Yeah. So, next question, question number, this is the reason for that question, picked up by the P680, okay, we can go through this, next what I have discussed, that is the reason what I have given here. The enzyme that is not found in the C3 plant, so which is the enzyme which is absent in C3 plant, which are the enzymes, let's see first, or you will be carboxylase, NADP reductase, ATP synthase, PEP carboxylase. Why? This is a correct option. Why? Because the PEP carboxylase found in only the mesophyll cells of the C4 plants. Isn't it? So the mesophyll cells of C3 plants does not have this PEP carboxylase in it. So that's why PEP carboxylase is the correct option and is the reason why it is the correct option. Clear? Next, question number 17, statement A. They are, here they have given two statements. See, let's see the statement A first. Photosynthetic ATP synthesis is called photophosphorylation. Of course, that is right. Alba, photosynthetic ATP synthesis is called as what? Photophosphorylation. Correct statement. Let's see the statement B. Khan's anatomy occurs in the leaf of maize plant. Of course. Maize and sorghum, especially which are growing in dry tropical region, exhibit this bonds anatomy. So this is also correct statement. So let's see the options what we have to select here. Statement B is correct and statement A is wrong. No, both the statement are correct. Both the statement A and B are correct. This is the right option. But other two, statement A is correct, statement B is wrong. This is wrong. And both the statements are wrong. This is also wrong. So which is the correct option here? Both the statement A and B are correct. Okay. So option B is the correct answer for question number 17. How come we can answer such a type of question? We have to know the statement thoroughly. Isn't it? So if we know this, then only we can answer such a type of questions. Okay. Next. Match the following with the correct labelings. Here they were given the labelings. A, grana, stoma, lipid, ribosome, starch granules. See here there are the options A, B, C, D, E. Okay. We have to correctly match it. What is A here? We know this is a lipid, ribosomes. Sorry. Alba, any the ribosomes. So see, A, 4, 1, ribosomes, A, 4. Okay, next. B, just be here. This one. This is stroma or a matrix. So B, stroma means 2. A4, B2. Here is that C5. Let's see C. What is this? Starch granules synthesized during photosynthesis. C5, right. D3. D means what? This one. Okay. 3 means lipid. Of course, this is a lipid molecule. What they have lipid. Correct. E11 means what? Grana. There is EC. Yeah, this is grana. So, which is the correct option here? B. A4, B2, C, B, D3, E5 is the correct option. 
so if we know the parts labelings correctly then we can answer lines okay next which is the correct option b for question number 8 9 which of the following is a correct sequence of creation of proton gradient across the thylakoid membrane okay so decrease in the ph of lumen yeah that is the correct option proton gradient accumulation of proton inside the lumen correct option a significant reduction in proton number in the stream so all of the following consequences are necessary for the development of creation of proton gradient across the thylakoid membrane so that's why all of the above is correct okay so next which technique has helped in investigation of kelvin cycle X-ray crystallography, paper chromatography, radioactive isotope technique, intermittent light. The correct option is one radioactive isotope technique. How this is the correct option? Because see here, radioactive isotope techniques has helped in investigation of Kelvin cycle. A scientist who is called as Melvin Kelvin uses this radioactive isotope that is C14 heavy isotope in algal photosynthesis. With the help of this C14. He discovered the phosphoglyceric acid is the first carbon dioxide fixation product, and this led to the discovery of first carbon dioxide fixation product was a C3 organic acid. He also helped to mark out the complete biosynthetic pathway. That's why this technique is used in the discovery of Kelvin's. So, which is a correct option? Radioactive isotope technique. Which he there he used carbon fourteen C fourteen as the radioactive isotope. So question number twenty we have C radioactive isotope is the correct option. Okay, next which is false statement here? Okay, let's see E statement first. Flow of electrons from water to NADP as non-cyclic current produces AD. Flow of electrons from water to NADP is non-cyclic and produces electrons. AT, of course, it involves all the process involves in the ATP synthesis. Light energy for photolysis of water comes from reaction center PS. Of course, this is also right. Two photosystems are needed for reduction of NADP. Of course, during non-cyclic photophosphorylation. NADPH is synthesized after the photosystem one release of electrons. Okay, then let's see the last statement. Maybe this one is false. P six eighty and P seven eighty. Because P has one as seven hundred nanometer of wavelength absorption capacity. P S two as six eighty. They have given reverse. So that's why this is the correct option. Okay. Next question number twenty-two. Read the following four statement and select the right option. Z scheme of light reaction takes place in the presence of PS one only. Is it right? No. Z scheme involves both the photosystem. Okay. Next, let's see the other statement. Only PS one is functional in cyclic photophosphorylation. Of course, yes, it is right. Next. Cyclic photophosphorylation result into synthesis of ATP and NADPH. No, in cyclic photophosphorylation, they are getting with synthesis of ATP. No NADPH is formed there. So stroma lamellae lacks PS two as well as ATP. Yes, this is the right statement. So which among them is the right? B is right. D is right. E and C are wrong. So that's why which is the correct option? C here. B and D is the right statement. Clear? Okay. Next question. Chemiosmo. Sorry. Chemosynthetic bacteria obtain energy from sun in product, right? Organic substances in organic substances. What is chemosynthetic bacteria? Means the bacteria which utilizes chemicals in order to get the nutrients. Such a type of bacteria is said to be chemosynthetic bacteria. Okay, they usually utilizes inorganic chemicals, not the organic one, or in products of sun. 
Why? Because chemosynthetic or organism convert their energy to inorganic compounds and convert them into organic plants, organic compounds. Unlike plants, chemosynthetic bacteria get their energy through oxidation of inorganic substances rather than photosynthesis. So that's why which is the correct option? D is the correct option for question number 23. Okay, question number 24. Energy required for ATP synthesis is PS2 comes from, in PS2 comes from, okay. So the energy which is required for synthesis of ATP molecules will come from what among the option, four option. Proton gradient, reduction of glucose, electron gradient, oxidation of glucose. These two are not relevant because ATP synthesis takes place before the formation of glucose itself, isn't it? So, which to one electron and proton? We know ATP synthesis mainly takes place in proton gradient. Mainly depends upon proton gradient, not on the electron gradient. Isn't it? So, that's why we choose the correct option, proton gradient. Why? Because the concentration of proton becomes more inside the lumen, less in the stroma. As a result, the movement of Protons from higher concentration to lower concentration alter the structure of the ATP enzyme, which is acting as a channel and involves in the synthesis of ATP. So that's why we choose the correct option here proton gradient. Clear? Next, during light reaction in photosynthesis, the following are common ATP and sugar, hydrogen, oxygen, and sugar, ATP, hydrogen donor, and oxygen. ATP, hydrogen and oxygen. So we know during light reaction, ATP is synthesized, hydrogen donor, protons donor are synthesized and oxygen is also set. Why? How come this proton donor? Because while carrying the electrons, the protons will also come through them. Okay. So that's why they are also said to be proton donor also. So which is the most suitable option? ATP, hydrogen donor and Oxygen are synthesized during light reaction. Okay, so question number 25, option C. Next, see here. Dark reaction in photosynthesis is also called so because. Why dark reaction in photosynthesis is called as so? Because it occurs in dark also. Of course, right, isn't it? So, sir, some amount, how much time? Energy rich compounds is there inside the plants at that time, till that time, the dark reaction is taking place in the absence of light. Okay, so it does not depend on light energy. Of course, it does not depend on light energy, but it is depending upon the products released during light, light reaction. Okay, it cannot occur during daylight. Okay, so it, it does not have a rule that it should not occur during daytime. Okay, next, it occurs more rapidly at course, The most suitable one, why it is called as dark among the four options is it also occur in dark at night time also. So that's why option A is correct. So a tricky, confusing question. Very simple concept, but a little bit of confusion is there. Okay, next. So this is the diagrammatic representation of water. The figure shows which type of diagram it represents. So by looking at the diagram, we can easily tell this is the diagrammatic representation of a cyclic photophosphorylation, isn't it? P700, photosystem 1, electron accepted, transfer the electron to ETS, and then back to the same ellipse. So which is the correct option? Option A, cyclic photophosphorylation. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Kelvin cycle has three stages. Reduction during which carbohydrate is formed at the expense of photochemically made ATP and NADH. Regeneration during which carbon dioxide acceptor 1, 5 RUBP is formed. Carboxylation during which carbon dioxide combines with 1, 5 RUBP. So identify the correct sequence. Among the three sequences, we have to identify which is the first one, which is the second one, which is the third one. Very first. Carboxylation takes place during Kelvin cycle, during which carbon dioxide combines with the ribulose 1, 5 bisphenol. Then reduction during which a carbohydrate is formed with the expenditure or a utilization of ATP and NADH. 
and then regeneration. Third step is regeneration during which carbon dioxide acceptor one comma B is back to the cycle atmosphere. So C, A, and B is the correct option. Yeah. Next, find out the correct labeling. The labeling is more or less similar to the same question. Yeah, they have given the cycle name A, A, B, C. So what is A here? B is carboxylation, A is reduction, B, C is regeneration. So which is the correct option? Carboxylation, B is carbo, sorry, regeneration. Let's see once again, B is what? A, reduction, carboxylation, Reach. Okay, so which is the correct option? Reduction B, oxidation or carboxylation, this one, and C, reach a reach. Okay, so by looking at this diagram, if we have to label the correct option. Okay, B is what? Carboxylation, A is reduction, C is reach a reach. Okay, so by looking the option, we have to select this. So here is the diagram and B, A, C, they have mentioned. Not A, B, C, they have changed. Okay, like this, you have to select the correct option. Next, so last question, which color of light gives maximum absorption peak of chlorophyll? So usually, we have discussed this on the photos, this one, pigments involved in photosynthesis, right? So usually, chlorophyll A and the capacity of bluish, bluish green appearance of the light spectrum in photochromatography, paper chromatography, chromatography. So, which has the absorption capacity of bluish, bluish color range of light having 680 to 700 nanometer. Okay, so this is the correct option for question number 13. Like this, many different types of questions have been formed. Okay, so go through all this. Like some of the questions what have discussed because it's not possible for us to discuss all the types of questions. But I hope I have discussed the synapses in detail so that it is very helpful for you people to attend more number of questions. Okay, thank you. Go through all the questions and if you come across with any doubts, you can ask us. Okay. Different types of questions, what I have selected. Go through this and try to answer more questions. Okay.